How would you like to own your home outright? What would it feel like to never make a mortgage payment ever again? On our mortgage-free segment today, we're going to interview Deacon Hayes from Well-Kept Wallet. Deacon is an author, a blogger, and a personal finance expert who's focused on helping the average person improve their financial lives. His advice and expertise has been featured in major publications like Yahoo Finance, CNN Money, and Forbes. We're going to chat with Deacon today about how he paid his mortgage off early and how others can do the same. Welcome to the show, Deacon. Hey, Andy, thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Well, we've known each other for a little while now, so I'm glad to have you back on the show. Uh, Last time we had you on, we were talking about how to retire early and reach financial independence. So I'll put that link in the show notes for everybody to check out too. But today we're going to talk about this big victory you guys have had in your lives of paying off your mortgage. But let's start with your journey. Originally, you you had $52,000 of debt. Is that right? And, And how did you accumulate that debt in the first place? Yeah, so it was basically consumer debt. So it was car loan, uh, student loan debt, credit card debt. So in our minds, it was just kind of like normal living, right? It's like, oh, I got to go to college. Let's get a student loan. Like, oh, I need a new car. Let's get a car loan. Oh, let's go. We want to go on a honeymoon. Let's put it on a credit card, right? So to us, that was just how we lived our lives back then. Um, And it was just this, that that was all we knew. Yeah, yeah. And so at what point did you say, well, I got to get rid of this stuff. Why, why do I even have this? How, how do I get rid of it? What, what, what point did that happen in your life? Yeah, getting married. So, right, uh, I think <laughs> you get married man. and you're like, okay, well, we have these habits and I don't think they've been, they were good habits. And so we combined our finances and realized, you know, combined between my wife and I, we had $52,000 in debt. And so we realized, okay, now we got to create new habits. We got to figure out new ways to um, live life with money. And so we took Dave Ramsey's financial peace course, and that was super helpful for us to realize, oh, hey, here's some practical things that that snowball to pay it off smallest to largest. And um, so, yeah, we, we kind of applied a lot of those principles um, and we're able to pay it off in 18 months, which was incredible. That's awesome. That's incredible. 18 months, you guys combined together. It was a great thing that uh, started off your marriage. And then from there, that sort of snowballed things for you. I mean, to use that term, uh, as you already used, that sort of snowballed things for you guys with your home purchase and eventual mortgage payoff. So let's talk about when you decided maybe paying off the mortgage was a good idea. How did, how did that come into your mind? Yeah, so just like after we're debt-free, it's the next big thing, right? And so we actually had a condo at the time, and that we had been paying it down, but we still had a lot of debt on it. And we decided we're going to have we're gonna have our first kid, so we're going to sell the condo buy a home. So one thing that we did was we put 20% down. So, you know, we bought this house for, I think it was about 200,000, put 20% down. So we had $160,000 mortgage. Um, And so for us, it was like, okay, what could we do to pay this off faster? You know? And so I had a buddy that worked in the food conference industry and he's like, Hey Deacon, if you come with me a few times a year, I'll pay a thousand dollars every time you come to just man this booth with me. Um, and so, you know, it was an extra three grand a, a year that I was able to throw at our mortgage. Uh, anytime we got like money back from taxes, right? So if we got a, a tax refund, I would put that money towards our mortgage. So, um, and then I, you know, I had uh, an online business. So anytime I had extra money come in, I would put it towards our mortgage. So it was really just saying, hey, anytime money flowed through, now that we don't have credit cards or student loans or car loan, it just went to pay down the mortgage. And so that's that's the approach that we used. That's incredible. So yeah, any new money that came into your life, whether it was through earnings, your side hustle or tax refund, became uh, fodder for the mortgage burning fire. I love that. That's cool, man. So what was, so you said the principal balance was 160 when you started. And then how long did it take you to pay off that mortgage uh, when you, when you began? Yeah. So I want to say it was between four and five years. Um, And so let's just take five years, right? So if we're say that's like a little over $32,000 a year uh, to, to pay it down. And so It was just at the time both of us were working, um, like when we first started, um, before my wife had got pregnant, had our first kid, Um, and so you know having that dual income help. But then she ended up deciding to stay home. So during that time, also, you know, we lost her income. But in the in the meantime, I've been building up my business on the side, and so I was able to take the extra money for my business to pay down the mortgage. I, I like to look at what can people do. I mean, I think five years is crazy. Like I can't even believe we did that, right? But I think that a lot of people could pay off their 30 year mortgage in 14 years or 10 years. Right. And so like uh, if they had just an extra thousand dollars a month or fifteen hundred bucks a month 
and you know you decrease your expenses five hundred dollars, increase some five hundred, you know, or increase increase your income five hundred dollars. Uh, then you have a thousand bucks to throw at your mortgage, right? So that was kind of the philosophy I used was like, hey, how can we reduce our expenses? How can we increase our income so that we can put the most amount towards our mortgage and pay it off in that short period of time? I like that. Well, you talked about some ideas for you know, making more money or, or finding new money, maybe a side gig with your buddy if he's got you've got some available time, you know, growing an online business, you know, tax refund. How about, you know, reducing your expenses or saving a little money if you have this, you know, mortgage payoff idea in your brain and you want to make it a, a reality? What are some things either that you did or that you'd suggest to people to help reduce their expenses? So small habits. So that like so one of the things that we did when we go to restaurants is only order water. You know, and I think at first it was kind of weird because normally I'd get like a Coke or a beer or whatever it might be. And I was like, okay, no, I'm just going to get water. But if you think about it for two people, like if you each get a drink, it's like three to four bucks. And if it's an alcoholic drink, it's going to be six to 10 bucks or whatever it is. Right. So you're significantly over time changing habits that are now going to snowball into, hey, I can put this money towards my mortgage. Um, So that was one thing that we did. Um, Another thing, we use the cash envelope system. So just basically saying, hey. We're not going to use credit cards for purchasing certain things like food, entertainment, that kind of thing. That gave us some boundaries that like, hey, we're living within this certain cash, right? So that that was helpful for a period of time um, to say, hey, you know, we're only going to spend this much on groceries and that helped us from to have that extra money. Um, some other things were like going through and just calling existing service providers. So, you know, internet, I would call like once a year and I just say, hey, do you guys have a better deal, right? Like. Um, and I remember we were paying like 20 bucks for high speed internet for a long time. I don't have that anymore, but that was a sweet deal where, you know, you just called in and said, Hey, we got this promotion for the next six months, you know? And so anything we could do to just reduce our expenses was huge. I think that's great. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing how those cable bills or the cell phone bills or the insurance bills just creep up year over year. Like you're not paying attention. And then you look back a couple of years later, you're like, well, I'm not actually getting anything better for that, but they're charging me more. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think a lot of times they have these promotions. They want to keep you as a customer. So they're like, yeah, we'll reduce you from 60 bucks to 30 bucks." And you're like, I just cut it in half, and all I did was make a phone call. Yeah, and that adds up, especially if you're paying it every single month. And that additional money, like you said, could just go right at the mortgage and keep paying it down and become mortgage-free. So another thing that you guys – it sounds like you did is partner closely with your spouse on the finances in general. Did you – create a budget? How did you guys uh, work together on that? How, how did that work in your household? Yeah, we, so we definitely would have, we did more like quarterly. So like after we paid off our consumer debt, we were doing like bi-weekly. So we're doing every two weeks budget check-in type stuff. And then, you know, we're like, okay, we kind of have these habits and routines in place. So more like quarterly check-ins of like, hey, how are we doing? Here's our goals, you know, that kind of thing. So for her and I, yeah, we definitely are on the same page. We wanted to pay it off in a short period of time. And so that was super helpful. But I, I was over, I was stressed out about doing it like every two weeks, right? Doing a budget check-in and then every month even. I was like, hey, if, we're, if we still have excess money to pay down our mortgage, then we're doing good, right? Why stress about the details? Um, so we were a little bit more lax on that. And so that, that worked for us. That's great. That's great. Well, yeah, checking in and, and making sure it works for both of you and also finding the speed that works for, for both of you to, to make it happen. So I understand you guys paid off this mortgage. Sounds like it took five years. That's incredible. And then you have now moved to a new home. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So we ended up getting a mortgage again, right? So mortgage (laughs) free and you're like, but yeah, we, we had a second kid and we realized, Hey, we'd like to live in a different area of town. And so it costs more money to live there. And so, uh, we had, we ended up taking out like, it was like a $400,000 mortgage. Uh, but we, we had paid off our previous house, but we, we hadn't sold it yet. And so we did it through Zillow instant offers. I don't know if you ever heard of that, but they, they basically just pay us like a fixed amount. They say, hey, this is how much we're going to pay you. So we just had to wait for that to close. And we rolled that, which was about 220 grand into our current house. So we had like 180 grand mortgage again, right? So then it was just a, okay, well, how do we you know now snowball that mortgage and pay it off faster? Um, and so we just paid that one off, which was, was huge. And I was like, hopefully we never do that again, right? Like we're like, why do we need a mortgage? We're good. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely... Uh, we did it twice. So we paid off our mortgage twice. So we have that on our That's on our incredible. Account. So when did you buy this uh, recent house? Was that just a couple of years ago? Yeah, it was, it was recently. So um, so you had I the pace say, and, the, and the development to keep going and pay that one off too. That's great. Yeah. And part of it, so we had a, there, there's, there's a lot of parts of this equation. We had a second home. Yeah. And we, 
we loved it, but it's a, it's a lot of work, you know, for people that are thinking like, Hey, I want to have a second home someday. Don't do it. Like, no, I'm just kidding. It, it just, I mean, it was just, there were so many things from like scorpions, snakes, trees falling down. Like you're like things you don't think about. You're like, Hey, I just want to have this getaway. You're like, Oh man, it was a lot of work. So anyways, we're like, why don't we sell that? There was about 50 grand of equity in that, that we could take to pay down this other mortgage, right? So we did that in the process as well, was get rid of this other asset that cost us money and, and roll that money in. But it's a different mindset, right? When you say, hey, I don't wanna have debt anymore. Um, and so we wanna be completely debt free. So we didn't own that second home outright either. So we had a mortgage on that one too. So so we paid off three mortgages. So <laughs> there you go, exactly. We don't, yeah, we don't own that other one. <laughs> well, that's incredible. I, I like how your, your, your thought process is like, hey, uh, I, I want l- not only less debt in my life, but less stress, because it sounds like that second home was just more stress. And I know you and I have talked about that in the past, whether becoming a rental property owner is something that is a is fun or you want to do or a great way to build wealth. And, and it can be for a lot of people. But I think at the end of the day, it sounds like it. everybody would agree that it's some work, right? There's a lot of work that goes into being a rental property owner. Oh, for sure. And, and yeah, we turned it into an Airbnb when we weren't there. And then it was coordinating with your cleaner. And in, in our area, they didn't have management companies. Now, a management company might be a game changer. But for me, I was actually managing it. I was like, man, that, that's too much work for a second property where I'm like, I wanted to have less stress, not more. You yeah, know? absolutely. Well, so now that you are triple mortgage free, so what are you guys going to do with this extra money now that you have available uh, resources? And, you know, I guess, what are your plans? Yeah. So, I mean, catching up on retirement. So early on in my career, I didn't really put much towards our retirement um, because we didn't have a lot of money. And so um, so now, yeah, it's maxing out retirement accounts. And then uh, we have a heart to give to worthy causes. So we're giving more than we ever have been able to before, which is really cool and exciting. Putting kids college money towards our kids college. Like my parents and my wife's parents didn't pay for our full college. And I don't know if we're going to pay for the full amount. Uh, but at least we're gonna we're gonna put a decent amount away so that they have that they have that there for them. So it's you know we've set ourselves up financially different from how we grew up, and we're hoping to kind of change the legacy for our kids as well. I think that's great, man. That's cool. That's a great message. So there's somebody listening right now, and they're saying, you know, I want to be mortgage free in the future too. What advice would you have for them today? to, I guess, the first thing that they could do when they finish this interview? Yeah, I think the first thing to do is have that like mock-up start but starter budget, right? So that budget that just basically says, hey, this is where I'm at right now. And so basically you can go through and say, you know, how can I make this smaller, right? So I went through line by line on my budget and said, hey, how can I make my internet smaller? How can I make my electricity smaller? How can I make my car insurance? Like every single one. And you'll be amazed. You'll probably cut out like 300 bucks a month just by doing that one thing, right? And you're not really changing lifestyle. I mean, you might be turning lights off more intentionally in your house and you might set your timer on your water in your yard differently or whatever. But, you know, your lifestyle doesn't change much by that activity. Um, then the other thing is like, what extra time do you have that you can make extra money, right? Like I, I, when we were paying off the 52 grand in debt, I was delivering pizzas at night. You know, when we were paying off our mortgage, I was helping my buddy with his conference a few times a year. So it's like figuring out like what, what's out there that you can do now. Um, and you know, online now there's crazy things where it's like, you can do voiceover work, you can do transcription stuff. Like there's so many things you could do just in your spare time to make extra money and not have a commitment of like a job, you know? Um, so those two things, like create that starter budget, go through line by line. And then the second thing is, hey, what extra time do you have and how can you make some extra money with it? I think that's beautiful. And and when you reduce or when you get a, or eliminate your mortgage, you now don't need as much for retirement anymore, right? Because you have less expenses in your life. So not only does it make you less stressed today, but it can potentially make your 60s even less stress. Is that right? Well, yeah. And that's the other thing. Yeah. You're keeping your, your expenses low. So that way, if you do retire, you, you have lower expenses, right? So that's the cool thing. Like we talked about the early retirement is if you change your expenses, you change how much money is necessary for you to retire, right? So uh, really good point. Awesome. Well, Deacon, I understand you have some resources like that starter budget on your site. Where can people go and learn more about resources like that and just hear more from you? Yeah. So best place is wellkeptwallet.com. And then the search bar just look for starter budget should be the first thing that pops up. Um, and we also created a debt snowball calculator for anybody that's interested. I love stuff that's super simple. So I tried to make the simplest calculator out there because some of them are really complex, you know? Um, so yeah, wellkeptwallet.com is the best place best place to go. Excellent. Well, we'll put that link in the show notes for everybody. Deacon, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Andy.